Anyone with a reef aquarium knows that good water flow is key to having healthy corals and a beautiful tank. Today, we want to take a look at why. Hi, this is Waylon from Rain Depot, and thanks for tuning in. In the early days of reef keeping, we had to use bulky power heads to get the water moving in our tanks. The flow pattern was all wrong, and we were blasting corals like a power washer. Today, we've got compact, cool running flow pumps and wave pumps that make recreating reef like water motion much easier. But do you know the science behind the benefits of water movement in nature and in our reef tanks? We'll discuss the basics of water flow and the benefits it brings to our aquariums as well as we look at how it can benefit your corals specifically. In nature, reefs are exposed to many kinds of water movement. The flow patterns range from steady mild currents to cyclic wave action. Waves and tides constantly flush the reef, washing away waste products and bringing in nutrients to suspending plankton. Since most of the reef's inhabitants are sessile, meaning they don't swim or crawl around, Food, nutrients, gases, and waste are managed by currents and waves. Without water movement, the reef ecosystem will collapse into stagnation. The same is true in our reef aquariums. You can't rely on the filter's output to adequately stir up a reef tank. To understand why, we'll have to look at industrial water treatment. It is a well-known principle that suspended particles will fall out of a solution in a low flow environment, especially if there are baffles that further slow down the flow. That's the principle behind settling tanks used to purify wastewater. Organic and inorganic particles like bacteria, algae, and mineral particles are heavier than water. Gravity causes the solids to fall to the bottom of a tank when water movement is low. The same thing happens in a reef aquarium. Rock work, corners of the aquarium, and the filter sump create low flow zones allowing suspended debris to settle and collect as sludge. You'll also see fine debris settle on and behind live rock and even corals. Low flow prevents debris from making its way to the filter stock and other mechanical filter media. Like it or not, a reef aquarium is an ideal settling tank with plenty of low flow areas that collect particles of debris. Here's the fluid dynamics formula but you don't need to do the math to know that sludge happens in the aquarium. Reversing your reef's tendency to act as a sludge collector is easy. No matter what size tank you've got, there is a flow pump made for it. Increasing water movement will keep the debris suspended so the filter can remove it. But water flow is more than just keeping your tank clean. So far, we've only looked at the physical aspects of water movement. Most of the marine life in an aquarium are microscopic. You can't see them, but there are billions of microbes at work to keep the ecosystem functioning. While some of these microbes are in the water, most are living on the surface in crevices of the live rock, sand, and even form specialized communities under coral colonies. These microenvironments range from oxygen-rich aerobic zones on rock surfaces to anaerobic denitrifying niches inside rock pores. These colonies of microbes do most of the work of purifying and recycling waste products and also the nutrients in the aquarium. But the fact is, they depend on water currents to bring them the substances they need to do their job. Think of reef rock and sand as a big biological filter. It needs water circulation to keep it functioning efficiently. Circulation pumps bring the water to the rock and flush away waste materials and sediments that could interfere with the microbes living on and in the rock. Solid surfaces like reef rock, even though they're submerged, have a special thin layer of water right at the rock water interface. This is called the boundary layer. It's a thin layer of water that essentially does not move. Fish, macroalgae, and even corals are all surrounded by a boundary layer. Oxygen, CO2, waste, and other nutrients have to pass through the boundary layer. The lower the flow, the thicker the boundary layer. Wave makers and flow pumps force water across the rock, reducing the boundary layer and making it easier for the microbes to do their job purifying the water. In the earliest days of reef keeping, marine biologists recognized that captive corals did much better when there were wave-like currents in the holding tanks. We've known for a long time that corals in nature are surrounded by a 1 to 2 millimeter diffusive boundary layer, or DBL. Water motion keeps the layer thin, allowing easier transfer of nutrients and waste. To mimic wave action, Dr. Walter Addy and others experimented with surge tanks and dump buckets, 
pioneering the way for today's modern wave-making flow pumps. Zeusanthellae algae inside the coral tissue work with the coral polyps to share energy-rich substances and recycle nutrients. Corals rely on water currents to bring food and essential elements for many biologically necessary processes. These processes include photosynthesis by zeusanthellae, carbonate skeleton building, reproduction, and nutrient and dissolved gas exchange. There are a number of studies that show coral metabolism as measured through photosynthesis and calcium carbon production, is directly affected by water flow. The research is conclusive that slow water flow inhibits coral growth. But there's more than just a DBL at work here. An international team of researchers discovered that corals just don't passively wait for water currents to overcome the boundary layer. The research revealed that reef building corals are covered with microscopic cilia that constantly beat creating many vortices that spin in the opposite direction of water flow. Corals actively disrupt the boundary layer, increasing transfer of nutrients to the coral and waste products out by up to 400%. The test was run in a tank containing Acropora, Montipora, Ceratopora, Protopalithoa, Palithoa, and the polyps of Discosoma. These findings show how important water flow is to the metabolic processes of corals. Corals need water flow to maximize growth and health. Coral cilia can influence the boundary layer, but only up to about 2 millimeters from their surfaces. Increasing water flow is essential to bring the boundary layer down to 1 to 2 millimeters so corals can manage the nutrients and gases that affect growth. Increased flow also maximizes the micro community's ability to remove nitrate, ammonia, and other waste. And finally, a flow pump will keep debris from collecting behind the live rock. Wave makers and flow pumps do more than make corals sway like they do on a reef. Water flow is an integral part of the coral biology and necessary for keeping corals in captivity. We no longer need to build our own surge device to have great flow for our corals. Today, we have an array of purpose-built water pumps, many with tide and wave mimicking functions built right in. No matter what size of reef you have, there's a flow pump for you. We hope you found this information helpful. If you did, let us know by clicking the like button below and feel free to share it with your friends. Until next time, take care and happy reef keeping.